Okay, so when you've set up your survey, you have begun the distribution. The next step is to think about the data analysis and downloading the data. I'm not going to go through lots around um, key data analysis. What I am um, in terms of the actual analyzing it, um, but this is about how you download the data and deal with the data. What you'll notice here is I have generated some test responses, and so this um, uh, uh, sort of fake Latin uh, information has been put into those open-ended responses and some, some test responses have been included. Also, there are some responses that I, I completed um, as well. Um, so, so you can see the, the different sorts of responses that you will um, uh, have from your survey. So uh, we've got some 10 responses. So the simplest way to think about the data is, oops, sorry, is to click on data um, and then export your data. So if you click on export, you'll notice there's some various different options from CSV, a standard comma separated variable. This can be incorporated into almost any um, Excel style spreadsheet. Um, so uh, again, TSV is, is similar. There is Excel directly, which is from the XLSX files. So we can um, uh, deal with that directly in Excel. Um, XML, which uh, is used for various uh, different sorts of programs, but most straightforward is usually Excel or SPSS. Most commonly, um, there is obviously a Google Drive if you want to upload it um, di directly. Um, but if you download in terms of SPSS, if I just download the data, it will download it as an um, uh, zip file. So you can see here that the zip file has downloaded and then you can extract that zip file. Um, so that's just now extracted. And then if I opened up SPSS, um, just to note what happens here is that um, all of the information from the different fields, that means the different pieces of information you've put in, like the question text and the question responses, um, are all automatically incorporated into the SPSS file. Um, you may want to edit some of this, um, but obviously we don't. it doesn't edit it live. So you have, when you download a newer version, then you'll have to do the editing again. So, so you may just be worth just downloading data so you get a sense of what the data is going to look like. Um, but wait until your final data comes in before you do the full editing um, of the data set and deal with your data in SPSS. Um, you can deal with some bits of data within... Um, within Qualtrics itself. Um, so if I just uh, go to my Qualtrics survey, um, sorry, I'll come back to this. Um, there's, you can do some basic cross tabs in, um, in Qualtrics if you want to. So you'll have your variables, which will be your questions and you could do some, um, some, some information there. I generally find that it's most people are more comfortable using an, uh, a program that they're familiar with, such as um, Excel or SPSS. Um, there is also, um, you can look at um, the different responses you get from your text um, and you can go to those different questions to look at that. Um, so for each response in terms of in uh, uh, Qualtrics, what you can do if you want to, you can view each individual response. Um, lots of people don't necessarily do this, so that will include your questions and the response. So you can see here that they've consented, and this is just some, some random responses or just responses that I've put in um, and how people have, have, have answered for each of those. So that will give the response to uh, every individual who has taken part in the survey. So you can do that. Again, obviously, if this is non-anonymized, you'll be able to see who that was as well. Um, and we can export those as individual responses. But mainly what people will be doing is looking at it in terms of SPSS. So you see here that you will get information on when the, the survey was started in terms of the timing, when that was finished. Um, this doesn't record IP addresses unless you explicitly specify it. So we get non-personal identifying data. So it's not, uh, it doesn't come under the GDPR unless you begin to include something that is identifiable. Um, and if we look at our variable views, you can see here that it includes uh, not only a, na a name or a label. So this is the question I called attitude. Um, it includes a question and whatever the answer is. And because I included uh, these uh, categories, um, it's already worked out um, 
what those are and put those through. So you can see how um, SPSS has already uh, taken the information from the survey and incorporated that um, into a standard SPSS file. So some of them, which for example are ranking questions, um, you can see this will separate out each of those. So group one item ones, it will see whether they, that participant put that, those in there. So participants, will, these will look like they've got big gaps in them because they will only be putting each item into a, a particular group. And so sometimes there won't be a particular item included in that group by any of the participants, which will look like a blank. It just means, so for this one, um, so uh, group three, item one, no one put in item one in group three. They could have done, so you can see how these are separated. And this is where it's important to try and think about how does this actually look and how am I gonna then um, create data that is m manageable from this set, set of uh, responses. So things like ranking and pick group and ranking can end up with lots of different variables for each of those options that you might then need to use some of the function in SPSS to, to move those towards a, a, a manageable data set to run your analysis on. Um, and so you can you can go across, and it is well worth looking at this beforehand um, and thinking about, so these were the, uh, uh, how the questions are gonna be displayed, what data is gonna come out of those. These are the open-ended text. These are the different questions around them with different options um, from those. So you can begin to get a sense of how the data gets downloaded and what that looks like. So when you've downloaded your data, um, the, the, um, the next step that many people look at is in terms of reports. Um, so some people just down, set up their survey, distribute it, download their data, and don't necessarily move on to the reports. But I'm just going to briefly go through some of the reporting functions when you've done your data analysis um, or when you've done, uh, completed your data, um, or even during the data process. So there's two sections. One is about the results and one is about reports. So in the results tab, which is under this reports, you can see you've got answers to each of your questions. And by default, it will include some uh, graphic. Um, and if it's got some uh, uh, open-ended responses, it will just include those open-ended responses that people have put in those questions. Um, so this can go through your, and look at your, if you want to just eyeball your data, this is a very useful way just to look at that data. What you can actually do um, is, is you can add some different reports. So you might add a filter um, where you want to look at only participants who've, uh, you know, completed one part of the question. So if you had, you know, sent it out to different groups, you might look at those groups separately. Um, and we can actually create new reports with just, if one of the question, which is just the open-ended, um, I could create a new report. Um, so I can see here, I've got these two reports. One is a default and one is this new report. And what I'm gonna do is select only those questions that I'm actually interested in, um, which are open-ended. So um, in this case, I'm just going to deselect all of those um, ones that don't have an open-ended um, and leave the ones that have an open-ended question and you can see here um, so so this will only show those questions which had a, the open-ended responses which are those ones there and the others are, are not displayed it comes up this uh, this um, yellow message um, so what you can do this is just a, a quick way of looking at you can also just share this um, it's not the most uh, 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 best presented way of looking at the results, but it's a straightforward way to share it with some people who want to look at some of the key features. So you could just download that as a PDF document. Um, and you can see here, this has only got the questions that you've looked at. So I'll show you what that actually looks like or download it as a Word document or even as a PowerPoint document. Um, so you can set up some reports to download some of the key features. Um, of the data and then download those and share those. This is a quite quick and straightforward way of um, examining the data. So this should at some point um, be able to download uh, a PDF with just those responses. I'm not entirely sure why it's taking so long. Um, so if I just look at that, what you'll notice here is that's just the question and the responses and here's another question and the responses so you can see it's a very straightforward just way to download and look at the questions and responses um and and, and so we could set up some reports in, in and we can so we can just edit the questions that we want to look at 
and, and we can also download those so we can select those questions and download it into um, for example a PowerPoint file which will do the very similar thing but it will just have a question per slide um, and then be able to uh, look at that as a PowerPoint file. So this is quite a good straightforward way of just getting um, a quick report to get see to see what the data is doing at the moment, to see what the data looks like. Um, might be useful for interim reports that you might have um, to share with uh, colleagues or supervisors. So you can see here it's really just a standard report uh, in PowerPoint which will just have the questions in an obsequy clearly set out but we could have selected different graphics to represent those different questions so again in um, in here we can edit those graphics and choose to have that displayed in a different way so we could uh, remove that visualization for that question um, and we can actually add a different sort of visualization should we so want um, we can have it as a pie chart or some other thing. So you can see you can do some editing within the reports and you can save them as a new report. So we can set up new reports with different parts of a question. So that's just the, um, the standard results in Qualtrics function. There is also a more sophisticated way of doing this by setting out a report. So if I click on reports and then follow the reports tab, if I um, create a report, um, so I might just create it as an A4 report. I'm going to call it test report. Um, I'm going to call it interim report. Um, I could create it from my, the results report that I've already set up. But just to show you how this does, does blanks, this is basically as a blank document. And so I could begin to include just some text. Um, so this is very useful. Uh, here is the report text. Um, so we might have a, a standard report that we're going to release at various points or you know might um, do an interim report and just to show people some of the key results um, or set up some final report that we might have or an executive summary. For example, if you said to your participants, you might, um, if you're interested in the results, um, let me know. We could set up a, a default report to be sent to those participants early on in this process. So when it comes to the end of the data, you can just show them some of the key headline, um, key headlines of the data. So you can see here we can edit these. Um, so if we wanted to set up a title here, um, I can make that bold. I can change the colour of that, um, and then some report text um, and. Uh, other information and I can put that in italics etc. So you can see here we can uh, edit the look and feel of this um, but we can also uh, import some questions so for example I might um, put in some graphics with the questions and some of the responses and again each of these I can uh, edit um, and I can change that so I can make it look uh, slightly different and then I could insert some text below that where I put in um, some interpretation um, and I could even set it up like a, a, a different report and I could insert um, uh, a, an image or a visualization or a divider or any of these as you can see there's all sorts of different things that um, I can add in terms of this report um, so if I just insert another question here um, now this one I'm just going to insert their responses so you can see here and again I'm just going to edit this by removing that one and so you can see, begin. I can begin to uh, set up a report. Let's put that in big bold. Um, and I could even set up various reports. So I could set up a second report if I wanted to add a new report, which just um, set up a, a new report. And this time I'm just going to add a filter so I might create a filter so in this case um, I could only I might show things where uh, only certain groups of people have been selected or only data that is fulfilled certain criteria um, 
I don't have that at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. But once we have set up a report, the, the thing that we can do here is, again, we can um, share this report by downloading it as a PDF. Um, and that is something that we could then send round. But perhaps more usefully is we can share this online. So if I look at the PDF, you'll see here there is the standard report and I could have put in text here. So a lot of data and this will be a live report in the sense of um, when you download that, that will be the latest data. So as we, as the data gets collected, this may change. Um, so uh, uh, what we can also do, um, which perhaps more usefully, is make it a public report, which means we can put this um, online. So if I click on save, um, I can generate a link. So if I just go into uh, a new tab, and then what you'll see here is there is a, an interim with live data. So we can set up the report and this will have the live data. And so as responses come in, this will be um, constantly updated. Um, so this is a really useful one if you want to send around to people sort of the latest information about the report um, or about the survey. And we can also, as you can see here, we can passcode protect it. So I could put um, the uh, password in there and save that. So again, well, if I want to share that, um, then participants will see that report and it says password protected. I can then have only a select group of people look at that and then they can see the live data. So this becomes a very useful way if you're collecting data at, um, for an event um, when you want to know something about the participants and this becomes a delegate list or it could be on some feedback on a module and you can see the live data that feedback on a module or in terms of research that you might want to do an interim report for your research uh, funder or reporting uh, um, a funding council. Um, so these can all be set up at the outset and you can incorporate some of that live data. So this is obviously just basic headline data rather than any kind of more sophisticated analysis, but this can be useful um, when it comes to uh, um, sharing some of the uh, overarching uh, data that is coming in from your survey. So you can see here, this is all editable. You can change things as they go through and remove things, but we can set out a number of reports. Um, early on in the uh, data collection stage, we can begin to think about what is it we want it to look like? What do we want to actually say about the um, results when we finished the survey? So that's the, the, the last of the videos on um, how to set up a survey and work through this. Um, and so just to say some key features that you might want to think about is thinking about the participants as they're going through this in terms of how they experience the survey, thinking about checking it many times so you can see you try out different routes and see what the survey looks like and how long it takes to complete it. Um, think about how you're going to distribute the survey. Um, when you again set it up at the outset, think about how the data is going to come in, what that's going to look like. Um, and so you're mindful of knowing what that's going to look like when your final data comes through. And so you're not shocked by the data that comes from this um, and how you might begin to analyze it. And also begin to think about what sort of reports you might want to be sending out to people. And can you set those up early on in the process so that they're ready at any stage to just um, download or share some of those uh, findings um, for other interested parties? And you can anonymize and select just particular points to focus on. Hopefully that's covered some of the key features around Qualtrics and you've got a better understanding of, of, of what Qualtrics can do.